this is such a good spot because the wind is coming from the south. I've got this little wall behind me. It's block me from the wind. I can just chill out here, eat my sandwich, just hang out. Hopefully I don't fall asleep and find that my reel has been spooled with a big lingcod. It's pretty nice though. I'm gonna have to apologize to the fish right now because I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna catch all of you. I just, you know, I, I can't help it. This is the spot. I got a three-way swivel, got some squid on it, and I got a regular surf leader, two pieces of squid on it. Ooh, I'm coming for you. Now, one thing that you should know, if you're going rock fishing, you're only allowed one pole, one pole per person, okay? So if you're ever on a skiff or if you're on the rock somewhere and you've got a rockfish in your possession and Fish and Game checks you and you're using two poles, they know you're targeting rockfish because you got one in your bag. But I don't know what I'm going to catch now. I could be catching perch. So I don't have any rockfish in my possession. For all I know, I don't know what I'm going to catch. A kelp greenling, a perch. So I'm using two poles. If I do get a cabazon, a lingcod, or a rockfish, then of course I'm only going to be using one pole. There's one, baby. Nice sling cod. Nice sling cod. Oh yeah, get over here. Get up here. Yeah, baby, let's go. Let's go. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Let's go. Hell yeah. Let me just explain to you how, how I caught that fish. So I was casting out and I've got about, I got one and a half ounce of weight on there right now. So, you know, I'm kind of on a cliff. So as I cast, I'm reeling up. And as I reel up, the bait comes up and I want to keep it near the bottom. So I'm reeling it up and I would pull it up and just let it sink down until it hits the bottom. Reel it up, sink down until it hits the bottom. Reel it up, sink down until it hits the bottom. And um, if you can see, I'm going to show you in a second with the GoPro, but there's a little cliff out here that comes out and what in my head I was thinking there's these coves and that's probably where there's sand but where the cliff comes out a little bit underwater is probably where the rock extends a little bit farther and I know that in the water where the rocks are where the reefs are that's where the fish are so I was trying to cast it right along there and just bring it down bring it up just along there so that's pretty much uh, what I did and, and it worked out so just letting you know Right, I'm gonna put them on the stringer. Just put them in the water because there's so many tide pools around here. That's a nice looking link cod, 23 inches on the swim bait. Here's a quick tip. If you do catch a big fish like this and you go and you want to keep him fresh, keep him in the water, and you got a stringer, don't put it straight through the gills. Pop a little hole in his uh, his chin or whatever you call that, put it through there, and then put it through its teeth put it through its mouth. That way, nothing will be rubbing against its gills and it'll stay alive longer. See that little rock right there? What I was talking about? Kind of, I feel like it extends out a little bit. It might drop down and extend a lot. And right here is there's this cove here. I feel like it's more sandy here. I don't know if my theory is correct or it's just luck, but whatever it is, it worked. See that, that, wow, look at that bird. He just got a perch. He just ate a whole perch. See that bird? Just ate an entire perch. It's got it down his throat right now. Well, while I take a break from the swim bait, just put a piece of squid on my other pole and threw that one out there. Since, like I said, I got one lingcod with me, so I'm only allowed to use one pole when going for rockfish or lingcod or cabazon. One thing I was curious about, and maybe y'all know, is what causes swells? You know, what factors into the swell and what changes it? 
So I know the coefficient today is really low. Low tide is a 2.8, high tide is a 3.4. So in the span of about seven hours, the tide only needs to raise half, half a foot, about a foot. And is that a factor in the swell? Like I know wind is a factor, but you know, what's the biggest swell? Because that's the major thing that I look for when I go fishing is the swell and the wind. If those two are low, it's almost guaranteed to be good fishing no matter what the tide is. So yeah, I was just, just thinking about that. Yeah, I don't know if don't get any more bites. I think it's time to go. Let's go get our lingcod.